Hey, Scott Jordan here, and this is your Thursday, July 16th. Is that right? 16th, 2020, COVID-19 update. And I have above me, beside me, depending upon how you're looking at this, Mark Warner, National Sales Manager of the Bulling Companies. Hey, Mark. Howdy, Scott. We wanted to join the call today with our masks on, but since we are social distancing, Yes. And we're in independent offices. We can do that. But wanted to show respect to uh, the need for masks. Yes. The, the, uh, the beauty of uh, Zoom allows us to social distance. While we're face to face. Yeah. Yeah. Love the technology. So what's happening this week, Mark? Well, you know, some of the things that's happening in the news is um, there's this epidemic going on something called COVID that's been dominating the news. Um, but all joking aside, you know, some of the things that's popping up about uh, the COVID era we're in, you know, they're gonna write about the year 2020 in textbooks. It's gonna be in history books 10 years from now yeah. about the uniqueness of the year 2020. But what's happening right now is people are trying to figure out how to get uh, as close to back to normal as possible with business. And all that relates to creating some kind of comfort zone for people. Um, there's been some surveys that have been done with the uh, hotel industry and vacation industry. And what's kind of amazing for the first time in history, on those surveys that they're doing, the number one leading decision maker on where people go and what they do is now cleanliness and hygiene, cleanliness and hygienic expectations and conditions, followed by number two, price, number three, location, number four, star rating. When would you have ever imagined in the previous couple decades that cleanliness and hygienic conditions would supersede price, location, and star rating? But well, and that was, uh, I think it was the previous one we talked about the uh, specifically carpet um, had a big play in it, which who would have thought people concerned about germs that they'd be concerned about carpet, but it ties in the same thing, right? Well, it's the floors and carpets are one of the number one influencers of somebody's perception of cleanliness. Yep. They don't necessarily see somebody disinfecting, but they look around and if it's not looking impeccably clean, they are not assuming that anybody knew what they were doing when they were disinfecting. Yeah. So yeah. it's um, it's a signal that we need to send out. And in reality, you know, that's what's going on in the news. The other things in the news is um, that we've got spikes going on all over the place. And as a result yeah. of that, second largest school district in America, L.A. school district, um, decide they aren't going to open their doors in the fall. They're going to pursue uh, like we're doing face to face webinar, virtual types of classes. But they are not opening their doors, neither is San Diego School District. So they're the first two that I've really heard of that are going down that path. But I would expect, Scott, by the time we do our next COVID update, uh, we're going to have uh, dozens of others that are following in the same well, pattern. Yeah, you and I talked about before, before we started uh, doing this recording that in California, there's a couple school districts amongst those ones that are saying they're going to be closed, that are saying they're going to be open. And not only are they going to be open, they're going to be open without, without the requirement of face masks and social distancing. So it's like, geez, I don't know where they came from. Well, the, the crazy thing is to even hear that is um, we all have probably seen on the news that Florida is now the hottest hotspot on the globe. Yeah. And, um, you got to wonder, I mean, two days in a row, they had the highest record of infections two days in a row, higher than any other country in the world ever. And you have to wonder if this is in some way related to the fact that they were all practicing social distancing during spring break. I mean, we were all watching it on TV. They're at least six inches apart. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I'm making a joke. Yeah. They needed to be wearing masks and being six feet apart, but uh, you have to wonder if that is part of the causative factor of Florida being in such a radical spike right now. You know, and I have to say, we all saw the interviews on TV. They were like, oh, we don't care. We think it's a hoax. We think it's whatever. And now there's a new term for that, Scott. Yes. They're now called COVIDiots yep. who are engaging in COVIDiotic activity. 
and COVIDiotic activity is going to a COVID party because you think it's a fraud while somebody documented with COVID sneezes on you yeah. and it was just on the news. And yeah. the guy that did it, his last dying breath to the nurse before he died is that he truly did think it was a fraud yeah. and he died. Yeah. Now that's COVIDiotic activity and we need to get rid of COVID idiots. Yeah, yeah, right. that and that and all the Karens that are out there. We all have seen the the <laughs> multiple Karens at the that the supermarket or whatever saying, "I'm an ex, I'm a doctor, I know you, I don't need to wear a mask." And they just they don't understand the concept that well, you know, the the owner of the store can kind of say whether or not you have to wear the mask or not. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, we're we're yeah. kind of poking fun at people doing COVIDiotic activity. Which, by the word, we ought to have a website that's called Covidiotic Activity. But uh, <laughs> we'll look but, that up uh, after the show, <laughs> unless somebody watching this right now has already gotten it. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned what we were thinking, but we do this live. That's part of the beauty of it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you're catching us as you're getting an idea of how our brains spin. Yeah. But um, you know, the, and to make this really like get back to to ground zero. Uh, this is so serious, and we, we've been kind of make, poking fun at people doing COVIDiotic activity, yeah. but it is so serious, and until it happens, until you have a friend or relative or somebody that you really care about that suddenly notifies you that they've been documented as being COVID positive, at that point, reality rushes down, just like uh, the force of gravity, what people don't get about COVID, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's serious. From the day you test positive, you have three days before you show symptoms. Mm. So in reality, you can be infectious prior to showing any symptoms. Now, anybody that's involved with frontline workers in healthcare, they're getting tested every day. Right. And so what happens is when they test positive, They've got the next three days to sit on pins and needles wondering if they're going to be symptomatic. Right. And the reason, and during that three days, with no symptoms showing, they're infectious. They can spread it to others. So that's what makes it so bad. Now, here's the other part that makes it so bad. Deaths have occurred within 48 hours of the first appearance of the first symptom. So Scott, you and I joked about the fact that we tend to be the last ones to run to the doctor when you got a cold, you yeah. know, you kind of go to bed and you kind of nurse it until you, you're feeling bad enough to go to the doctor. And this one, you can't. The first sign of a symptom 48 hours later can be death. It cascades so rapidly in a body. So I'm, I'm saying this because we've made light of this a little bit with COVIDiotic activity and all that, yeah. but... It is serious as a heart attack, and the number one front line of defense for this entire thing, for the first time in history, is us. It's us. It's the cleaning industry, people that specialize as professionals in offering disinfectants that are efficacious for SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID, yep. and for those professionals out there that are using them properly. So... I really think that it's really important to kind of put that all out there. The other thing, and the last point I'm going to make on that is make sure you understand what your state regulations are. Because technically, if you go to Phoenix and you come back to Philadelphia, Scott, Phoenix is a hot spot. Yeah. You're required to self-quarantine for 14 days because you're coming from a hot spot into this state. Or if I travel to Florida, and come back to Philadelphia, I need to self-quarantine for 14 days. There's a lot of people not following those rules. Yeah, and those of us that are involved with the supply chain, we need to be aware of the fact that there are certain regulations and requirements that revolve around how much we can get out and work and what we have to be conscious of if we're going into a hot spot, a documented hot spot, and trying to return back to our place of business. So enough serious stuff, but yep. I wanted to kind of put that out there because this is a lot of the people that view these videos are supply chain. Yeah. And, um, and we wanted to kind of put that message out there. The other message, Scott, that I know you wanted to tell the folks yes. about had to do with um, issues regarding uh, EPA registration for SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. Yep. I, I got a couple updates. First off, I've got 
This one here, remember we talked a couple of weeks ago that we were having trouble getting our bags for our bag in a box program. Those of you that uh, are not familiar with our bag in a box, unlike others, this is a two and a half gallon bag in a box. So there's two, two and a half gallons in a case. So you get the same thing as a five gallon pail. And one of the reasons we went with two and a half gallon, you know, long time ago when we first developed this package is we thought OSHA was gonna require um, a, a weight limit for be able to uh, pick stuff up and a five gallon pail was too much weight. So we said, well, anticipating this OSHA regulation coming, we developed the two and a half gallon bag in a box uh, to get around that. It ended up OSHA did not put that in place, but uh, two, two and a half. So you can get 36 of these on a pallet. It comes with uh, what we call a maxi spout, which is this thing here. It looks you guys that maybe have seen something like this, but it's usually filled with something that you uh, you drink at dinner time or anything. So it's the same concept, it's except it's chemicals. So this can go on a shelf. Um, again, maxi spout. Uh, if you take this connector off, this is the connected up to a dispensing system um, or filling small neck bottles. Take that off. You can. It, it uh, has a much faster flow. So we're back in stock next week. These will be back in stock, and. Um, not only for disinfectants, we do a lot of private label. Uh, this is a good um, kind of segue between gallons and five gallon pails. You can offer one size, covers two, reduce your inventory. So not only is it good for spray and go, it's also good for inventory in general. So that's exciting. And you know, the wine industry could take note of that because they currently don't offer Sauvignon Blanc in a two and a half gallon container, but I'd buy it. <laughs> That'd be a heck of a deal. I don't know what two, two and a half gallons equals in uh, standard wine bottle sizes, but <laughs> probably like 30 bottles or something. But, and then the, the other news is we're getting calls because this just kind of came out in the last, uh, last few days is about the Lysol products that have been approved for having the COVID uh, claim actually on the label. So people think, a lot of people think that that's a brand new product, like, oh, Hey, Lysol really came out of the out of the, the gates with something brand new. It's the exact same product they had before. It's just they um, how did how did we put it? They creatively got to the front of the line. Uh, well, in in one way or another, they got to the front of the line and they were the first to come through. And kudos to them for being the first to come through. But hundreds of others will follow within a week. Yeah, yeah. Well, they quite honestly, to, if yeah. we were first, we would have done a little press release saying, hey, we were at the front of the line. Yeah, I yeah, remember sure. one time you texted me about the fact that you were at the front of the line at a Southwest Airline check-in. So <laughs> people get proud of those things. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So the EPA actually has a statement on this uh, and then we'll put out a FAQ on it so that anybody wants to send it off to their, because a lot of the end users are saying, hey, sh I should be using that Lysol product versus anything else. Well, EPA statement is, is um, EPA expects to approve such claims for addition, the additional products on the end list. And those of you that haven't watched the show or updates before, you can do a Google search on EPA end list. That's where you can look up what products are officially approved uh, to be able to make a statement that uh, their product kills COVID. Uh, so it expects all products on the list to be effective against uh, COVID-2 uh, or COVID-19 when used according to the label directions, re regardless of whether they've completed laboratory tests or not. So all the products, 300, 400 products, including a large majority of ours, will additionally get the same claim. So it's not, the Lysol product is not a brand new product. That's very important. It's a, the same product, it just has an updated label. In That's other the words, they are getting on the sa same Southwest airline flight they just happen to be at the front of the line instead of the middle of the line. Exactly. We're not sure how they got to the front of the line, but I'm sure it, they bought their ticket before everybody else, right? Well, that kind of ties us into some of the things we see going on out there. Um, that was a great move on their part to do a marketing uh, yep. press release around the fact that they were first in line. Kind of cool. Um, and nothing wrong with that. We yeah. probably do the same thing. What we have a problem with is when people make claims that if you walk into a room and wave a magic wand, that it's somehow magically free and clear of any pathogenic microorganisms for the next 90 years. Yeah. And obviously, we've created the website, germwashing.com, to kind of track some of these crazy germ it's, it's coming. Things. Those of you that go immediately now, go to that link. 
it's it's not up yet. It's coming. We're hoping to have it done next week. We want to be able to have an interactive site that uh, people can post up. We have probably 30 or 40 products already that uh, people have sent us information on that are flat out frauds, or as I, I've said previously, bunk. I believe bunk is my term. Don't, don't hold back, Scott. Let yeah. it out. You yeah. So, so the website will, we're going to try to make it interactive so you can post stuff up and then the people can comment on it. A kind of a forum blog type uh, uh, format is the, is the goal. Yeah. So that's coming yep. soon, hopefully by the end of next week. Yep, and uh, next week when we get into our COVID-19 update next week, we'll talk a little bit more about our progress on the uh, Airx, RxPC program that stands for the Pathogen Control Program, which is under development and it's uh, really designed to be our way of being able to help uh, society, our customers, yep. our their customers. So it really gets into best practices, things to watch for, the effect of airborne, um, issues related to surface borne issues yep. and we're going to get into some of the technical weeds on all that next next week Scott yep yeah and conceptually that that, that program is going to be able to be done in person where it's possible as well as a webinar format just for if, if everybody's uh, wondering uh, what exactly how's that going to work uh, we're going to cover it on both ends yeah yeah I'm looking forward to it and um, I think that it'll evolve into a program that Lots of people in the supply chain will want to embrace, maybe yep. hosting something and having us on as a guest, um, which would be um, flattering. Yep, yep. So, so we're so we're back in back in shape, ready to go. The quad uh, quad suppliers, it's about the same business. Uh, is 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 going down a little bit. It's not quite uh, quite as um, as robust as it was uh, two months ago, but. We are able to handle most of the orders. Uh, most of our customers that buy the disinfectants from us are still on allocation, and we don't anticipate that changing. Uh, but if you're a customer that um, is not currently buying disinfectants from Bullen, uh, give us a ring, give your salesperson, uh, your sales associate a uh, uh, contact, and we'll see if we can fit you into our allocation schedule. So I think, I think that's pretty much it. Mark, you got anything else to add? No, I think we covered a lot. I guess the only thing is that uh, watch for next week's program when we're going to dive into airborne issues, surface borne issues, and some of the technical things that revolve around it. One of the questions that have been coming up a lot is how concerned do we need to be about indoor air quality, especially with people spraying disinfectants all over the place all the time. Yeah. And uh, there's some validity to that concern. And in other areas, there's uh, maybe... Um, some overzealousness of concerns. So I want to try to help package that into uh, what our real concerns are and, and what they shouldn't be. Okay, well, uh, thanks for everybody that's viewing us and, and thanks very much for the feedback. Uh, we've got some really good comments about uh, how, how this has helped people out in educating themselves as well as their end user customers. So thanks a lot and see everybody uh, next week. See everybody, back, yeah. back into the masks. That's right. Soon as I'm off. <laughs>